Good morning everyone. In last session, we discussed about NMR spectroscopy. In today's session, we'll be dealing with another experimental method to determine the protein structure is called cryo-electron microscopy. What is cryo-electron microscopy? Cryo-electron microscopy is one of the transmission electron microscopy where sample of interest will be determined and imaged with the help of the cryogenic temperature that is at minus 150 degrees Celsius. So, cryo-electron microscopy will occur at the cryogenic temperature and then the cryo-electron microscopy is most valuable and useful method to determine the 3D structure of the many biological molecules. The trio group of scientists named as Tubochet, Frank and Henderson won Nobel Prize in the year 2017 for development of cryo-electron microscopy and also the cryo-electron microscopy uses frozen samples, electron beam and image processing technique to reduct the protein structure or any biological molecules to overcome the disadvantages of the TEM. Now we are going to look at the contribution of the each scientist in the development of cryo-electron microscopy. Henderson and his colleagues showed for the first time to develop or to detect the 3D structure of the any biological molecule with higher resolution with the help of the cryo-electron microscopy. Whereas Tubachet showed how we can preserve or frozen the biological molecules by preserving its molecular shape in a glassy ice matrix during 1980s. Whereas Frank showed how we can process or image the 3D structure of the proteins or biological molecules with the help of the cryo-electron microscope. So now we are going to look at the principle of cryo-electron microscopy. So the image processing of cryo-electron microscopy will be done as like electron microscopic concept. The electrons are emitted by the source, are housed under high vacuum and are accelerated down to the microscopic column. Once the electrons are passed to the specimen or the sample of interest, the scattered electrons are focused by magnetic lenses in the microscopic column. Once the scattered electrons are passed to the specimen and the samples were tilted in the way in the favor of the electron beams where multiple images will be taken. The rendering of the projection generator view will be done with the help of the cryo-electron tomography. So now we have to know the sample preparation for cryo-electron microscopy. So the sample has to be in a purified form and also the sample has to be in a heterogeneity condition. So the sample preparation will be assessed using STS page or size exclusive chromatography. The best way to assess the sample is electron microscopic concept. And also the sample preparation can be done in two ways. The one way is thin film and the way is vitreous specimen. In thin film preparation, the sample has to be placed in an EM grid and then it has to be made to frozen without crystalline it. Whereas in vitreous specimen, the samples has to be made into a high pressure freezing and then it has to be cut into a very thin pieces and then it has to be placed in an EM grid. These are the two ways of sample preparation for cryo-electron microscopy. Vitrification process. This is the very important process in cryo-electron microscopy. So here the rapid cooling will be done in order to avoid the formation of ice. And also rapid cooling will trap the water molecule so that the crystallization process will not occur during this process. And then rapid cooling usually will be maintained in the liquid nitrogen temperature. And also the rapid cooling samples can be maintained for the longer period during vitrification process. In vitrification process, the sample will be placed in a carbon grip and also dipped in an ethane solution which are maintained in the liquid nitrogen container. This is the process for vitrification. The next step in cryo-electron microscopy is cryosectioning. Here, whole cells and tissues are too thick and it is difficult to spread as a thin layers. So initially we have to vitrify the samples and cut the sample as a thin layers with the help of the diamond knife. And sectioning is a very difficult process since destruction of the cells can occur. Distortions can lead to the loss of the structure of the molecule and also it is difficult to increase the signal to noise ratio. And the mostly used grips for cryo-electron microscopy is carbon grips. 
There are two main grids for cryo-electron microscopy. They are continuous films and holy films. The next step in cryo-electron microscopy is negative staining. Negative staining of cryo-electron microscopy has been done in order to get the information of the presence of aggregates or contaminants or size and shape of the molecule. In this step, adsorption of the samples will be done using carbon grids and then we will blot the samples in order to remove the excess sample and then we will wash the sample using deionized water and then we will stain the sample using heavy metals. And the heavy metals used here are ammonium molybdate, phosphotungstic acid and methyl amine vanadate. The advantages of this method are it will provide high contrast images, 3D reconstruction is possible and be able to study the structure of the molecule and also this method is radiation resistant. Next we are going to look at the single particle analysis. In single particle analysis the images of the randomly oriented homogeneous particles are recorded at low electron density. The particle images are retrieved from the digitized images and are iterated against the reference samples. And also the principle of single particle analysis is not the reconstruction of the biological molecule but it averages the multiple views of the many copies of the same molecule. Now we are going to look at the 3D reconstruction. In 3D reconstruction we are going to estimate the unknown orientation and 3D structure of the molecule. Here 3D electron density map will be generated from the 2D projection and angle of projection related to each other will be determined and also we will find the common line projection for each particles and this can be done in three ways. They are reprojection, automated particle picking and then image enhancement. We are going to look at the methods of 3D reconstruction in detail. The first one is reprojection. The 3D density map can be used to generate projection that can be used to realign the raw images. The process has to be repeated several times. The next one is automated particle picking. Here the particles are picked or get from the microgram and then each particle will be separated from each other. This can be done automatically and it is not a very effective process. The next one is image enhancement. The image noise is due to the random variation of brightness or color information in images recorded during the sensor. So usually cryo EM images are very noisy and produce low contrast images. Now we are going to look at the application of cryo electron microscopy. The cryo electron microscopy used to study about the molecular mechanism of all life processes and also it is used to study about the characterization of structure and mechanism of action of macromolecule complexes like spliceosome and IR channels etc. And then it is used to study about the drug designing properties and also used to study for the nanostructure and particle analysis and finally used to study about the material characterization. Now we are going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of cryo electron microscopy. So the advantages of cryo electron microscopy is that it will provide high resolution images. Unlike X-ray crystallography it does not require the proteins to be in crystalline form and also unlike NMR spectroscopy it does not require the protein to be soluble in highly concentrated solution. And also like in mass spectroscopy it does not require the protein modification for its purpose. And now we are going to look at the disadvantages of cryo electron microscopy. This method has complex measurement and data analysis. And this method is not suitable for the proteins with molecular weight lesser than 300 kilo Dalton. And in some cases it will not give you a high resolution images for certain molecules. And also shortage of lab with proper equipment and expertise is a very big problem for cryo electron microscopy. The challenges faced during cryo electron microscopy is that protein may interact with surfaces during blotting process and then denaturation of the protein and lack of proper alignment, image blurring, electron radiation may induce the movement of particles and substrates and also the proper alignment will be very difficult and also the lack of reproducibility from grid to grid and then finally addition of carbon residues 
may lead to decrease the signal to noise ratio of the particle. Until now, we saw three different experimental methods to detect protein structure. They are X-ray crystallography, NMR spectroscopy, and cryo-electron microscopy. X-ray crystallography needs the protein to be in crystalline form and help us to detect any size sample and also it give you an atomic resolution but then the crystallization may take years and also the protein structure may damage. While we look at the NMR spectroscopy, it needs the sample to be in a soluble form and it is used to study only small size molecule, not for larger size molecule but then it give you a close real protein structure. And finally, the last method is cryo-electron microscopy. In this method, the sample needs to be in frozen state and it is preferable for larger molecule, not for smaller molecule and also it will give you a near atomic resolution and also it's a fast sample preparation method. We came to the end of the session. I hope you understand about cryo-electron microscopy. In next class, we'll be discussing about homology modeling. Thank you.